Sizewell C represents a landmark investment for International Public Partnerships, or INPP. It's a project that embodies long-term value creation, stable returns, and a contribution to the UK's clean energy future. We'll look at how the returns are structured, how the regulated asset base, or RAB, model works, the key phases of the project, the scenarios ahead, and what all of this means for INPP and its shareholders. Sizewell C is a new nuclear power station in Suffolk on the east coast of England and is being built next to the existing Sizewell B power station. It will consist of two European pressurised reactors expected to deliver a combined capacity of 3.2 gigawatts. That is enough to power around 6 million homes, or about 7% of the UK's expected electricity demand. Nuclear power currently provides around 15% of the UK's electricity, but most existing plants are due to retire by 2030. Sizewell C is therefore vital for the UK's energy security and its net zero goals. It will deliver reliable, low carbon, base load power for at least 60 years once operational. The project's investors include the UK government, EDF, Centrica, LACAS, the Nuclear Liabilities Fund, and of course, INPP. It is regulated by Ofgem and benefits from a bespoke government support package that underpins long-term stability and investor confidence. Sizewell C combines scale, stability and sustainability, a true cornerstone investment for INPP's long-term portfolio. In July 2025, INPP and its core investors were announced as preferred bidders as part of Sizewell C's final investment decision. On the 4th November 2025, financial close was achieved. This is a crucial milestone. It means regulated revenues have now commenced and INPP has made its first equity investments into the project. Under INPP's model base case, which aligns with the government's regulatory case, construction is expected to continue until the late 2030s, with the scheduled commercial operations date in 2039. Following the commercial operations date, a post-construction review period of about three years will begin. During this time, Ofgem will assess the plant's performance and may make adjustments to calibrate operational incentive mechanisms. After that review, the investment will enter its full operational phase. Over the next 60 plus years of operations, those predictable inflation-linked cash flows are set to continue. Investor returns will be reviewed every five years under Ofgem's regulatory framework, underpinned by strong governance and consumer protections Sizewell C is therefore not just another infrastructure project. It is a landmark investment, a flagship for UK nuclear. And it's the first nuclear project in the world financed by financial investors under a regulated asset base or RAB model. The RAB model is a well-established framework used for major national infrastructure like energy networks, wastewater, and now nuclear power. It's a government-regulated system designed to attract private investments at low cost of capital while protecting consumers. Under the RAB model, investors begin earning a fixed regulated return from the moment they invest, rather than waiting until the project becomes operational. Consumers contribute through a regulated charge that is carefully set to ensure value for money and fairness. Initially, this was set by the Secretary of State and once operational, it will be set by Ofgem. Government backing adds another layer of protection, giving investors confidence in the project's stability. Think of regulated asset base as a running balance of construction spending. Every pound spent efficiently is added to the RAV value, and investors earn a regulated return on that balance. This means investors like INPP start earning from day one of their investment. The RAB model recognizes the invested capital and compensates investor for it as the project is built. 
For Sizewell C, this means that during the forecast construction period and into early operations, investors earn a fixed real return of 10.8%, with inflation added to this as measured by CPIH. From this, the project expects to pay investors a cash distribution, which is capped at a yield of 6% per annum for the expected construction period. If construction costs exceed pre-agreed thresholds, the government support package steps in and investors are not obligated to contribute beyond their original commitments. Instead, the government support package responds to finance the project through to construction completion. The RAB model also includes incentives and adjustments and penalties linked to completing construction in a timely and cost-efficient manner. If there are construction overruns, investors do not benefit from a full increase in the RAB balance and are instead penalised in a way that is both transparent and predictable. This means investors have predictability with their regulated returns even if costs increase, consumers and the government get discipline. Efficiency is rewarded, not overruns. That's the essence of the RAB model. Predictable inflation-linked returns for investors and value for money for end consumers. Sizewell C's allowed revenue has four building blocks. These are all recovered through regulated consumer bills under Ofgem's oversight. During the construction phase, revenue consists of three main components. First, a return on capital. Second, operating costs. And third, incentives and adjustments linked to performance. Once the plant is operational, a fourth component is added, a return of capital, which is also known as depreciation. Let's take each one in turn. First, the return on capital. This is calculated by multiplying the regulated asset base value by the weighted average cost of capital, or WAC. This is the regulated return earned by debt and equity funders and provides investors with predictable regulated earnings. During construction and the first three or so years of operations, equity investors receive a fixed inflation-linked return. We call this the initial WAC or IWAC. For size we'll see, this is fixed at 10.8% in real terms. Inflation, as measured by CPIH, is then added to this. This equity return is earned on invested capital from day one and delivers an immediate cash yield. This is a unique feature for construction projects funded via the RAB model. During operations and following the post-construction review, investors earn a regulated WAC or RWAC. This is set every five years by Ofgem. The return is expected to reflect the lower risk of a mature regulated asset and provide investors with long-term stability. This RWAC will reflect prevailing market conditions and is designed to be fair and predictable to both consumers and investors, much in the same way as Ofgem currently does for regulated energy networks. Second, operating costs. This is the recovery of day-to-day -day operating expenses needed to run and maintain the power plant. During construction, these costs are limited to project company overheads since the plant is not yet running. During operations, operating costs are fully recovered. This includes staff, maintenance, and all nuclear operations. Third, incentives and adjustments. This includes performance-based elements like rewards for efficient delivery, penalties for underperformance, or adjustments for inflation and unforeseen events. During construction, these are focused on performance. This includes incentives for timely delivery and penalties if costs exceed certain thresholds, although a government support package will step in if there are extreme cost overruns. Then, during operations, the incentives broaden. They cover performance-based mechanisms for efficiency, service reliability, and safety, as well as inflation adjustments. And fourth, the return of capital, which is also known as depreciation. 
This is the repayment of the capital invested over the asset's life. It reduces the RAB as that capital is returned to investors. This component does not apply during construction as the asset is not yet in use. In fact, during this phase, the RAB value is increasing as construction costs are funded and logged to the RAB. Once operational, the allowed revenue includes this repayment. Capital is gradually returned to investors as the RAB is depreciated over the plant's 60 plus year life. Together, these four building blocks ensure predictable, inflation-linked revenues during construction and operations. They create a balanced model that shares risks, incentivizes efficient and safe operations, and delivers value for money for the UK consumer over the entire life of the project. The RAB framework defines two regulatory thresholds relating to construction costs. These are the lower regulatory threshold, or LRT, and the higher regulatory threshold, or HRT. These thresholds govern how costs are shared between investors, consumers, and the government. Let's walk through INPP's model scenarios and see how these thresholds relate to each of them. First, let's look at the upside case. This is where construction costs come in at an estimated £38 billion in real terms. This is below the lower regulatory threshold. In this scenario, investors could expect an internal rate of return, or IRR, in the teens during construction. All efficiently incurred construction costs are added to the regulated asset base. In addition, investors are rewarded for efficiency. Half of any cost savings below the lower regulatory threshold are added to the RAB, allowing investors to earn a return on it. The other half benefits consumers through lower future charges. Next, INPP's base case. Here, construction costs are aligned with the government's regulatory case. This assumes a cost at the lower regulatory threshold of £40.5 billion in real terms. This results in a low teen IRR during construction, underpinned by the fixed real return of 10.8% plus inflation. So what happens if costs rise but stay between the lower and higher regulatory thresholds? In that case, any overruns are shared equally between investors and consumers. Investors continue to earn their regulated return of 10.8% plus inflation, but only on 50% of that overspend. This is, of course, on top of the return they will still earn on all costs up to the lower regulatory threshold. Now, the downside case, which we align with the higher regulatory threshold. This assumes costs of £47.7 billion in real terms. Here, returns are still expected to be in the low double digits during construction. And if costs were to rise beyond the higher regulatory threshold, the government support package steps in to provide additional funding. Investors are not obliged to fund beyond their original equity commitment. This means that even in a severe downside scenario, where construction costs are significantly above the higher regulatory threshold, investors are still expected to earn a return above INPP's June 2025 weighted average discount rate. This is all thanks to the powerful protections built into the RAB framework. Sizewell C therefore provides INPP with strong, predictable returns, a resilience few large-scale projects can match. What makes Sizewell C unique is the degree of protection for both investors and consumers. For investors, these comprehensive protections include a capped exposure. Investor commitments are limited to their original equity. There is no requirement to inject more capital, even in extreme cost overruns. Liquidity support. The government support package provides credit facilities to keep the project funded, even if private capital is unattainable. This protects the continuity of construction. Discontinuation protection. If the project were ever abandoned, the regime provides for recovery of efficiently incurred costs. 
This ensures investors are not left stranded and it removes any incentive to continue in severely inefficient or unsafe circumstances. Nuclear specific risks. Safety liabilities, outages and long-term decommissioning costs are ring-fenced. They are recovered through a separate independent decommissioning fund. Governance rights. Through board representation and other defined rights, INPP maintains oversight of key decisions. This supports strong governance and transparency. Together, these protections ensure that even in severe downside scenarios, investors continue to earn returns while their downside financial exposure is strongly mitigated. Now for consumers, the protections are just as strong and include regulatory oversight. Consumer interests are front and center. Every cost claim is reviewed and only efficient costs can be added to bills. Wasteful or inefficient spend cannot be passed to consumers. Gradual cost recovery. Consumer payments are phased and regulated over time, ensuring that any costs are spread gradually across decades, minimizing the impact on bills, while delivering secure, low carbon power at a lower whole life cost. Long-term value. While consumers contribute, they also gain. Sizewell C is expected to provide 3.2 gigawatts of low carbon baseload electricity for over 60 years, helping to stabilize energy bills and insulate consumers from the volatility of international energy markets, like imported gas. Balanced risk sharing. The model ensures investors, government and consumers each play a part. Investors bear delivery risk and only earn regulated returns, while government protections prevent excessive costs being passed to consumers. For INPP, Sizewell C delivers an attractive cash flow profile. The total returns compensate both cash yield and RAP growth. Revenue and returns start immediately from financial close, supporting INPP's dividend cover. As construction milestones are achieved, the regulated asset base grows, creating capital growth. And once operational cash flows step up significantly supporting INPP's long-term and progressive dividend policy. The yield is capped at 6% per annum until the scheduled commercial operations date. This provides a further incentive for investors to reach operations in a timely manner. It also ensures revenues are reinvested in the project construction for efficiency. Thereafter, as the project matures, the regulated return is expected to decline gradually, all other things being equal, consistent with the project's low risk. And Ofgem off resets the regulated VAC. Importantly, INPP is not exposed to wholesale power prices. Our revenue comes from regulated returns, not from selling power. As a result, Sizewell C strengthens INPP's progressive dividends. Our fully covered progressive dividends are expected to extend from 20 to 25 years, a 25% increase in coverage duration. For our shareholders, that means stronger dividend visibility, enhanced portfolio balance, and sustainable long-term growth. To sum up, INPP's investment in Sizewell C is expected to provide stable inflation-linked cash flows to support its progressive dividend policy, strong government protections to insulate investors from severe downside risks, diversification, Sizewell C sits alongside RAB assets like Cadent and Tideway, balancing INPP's portfolio. And capital growth potential. As construction progresses, NAV accretion builds further value. That's why we see Sizewell C and the RAB model as such a compelling addition to the portfolio. We hope this session has helped you understand how the RAB model works, why it lowers risks and costs, and most importantly, how INPP shareholders can benefit. For more detail, you can visit our website or refer to our regular reporting. Thank you for watching.